procedure for reassembly is basically the reverse of that for disassembly. Before starting reassembly, you must thoroughly clean the rotor shaft, bearings, and other components, and make sure there is no foreign matter in the bearing pedestal. Also, replace all tongued washers, O-rings, gaskets, and other consumable parts with new ones. When installing the bearings and the rotor shaft, take off your work gloves and work with your bare hands. Take care not to allow foreign matter to contaminate the components. For reassembly, follow the disassembly steps in reverse. Install the compressor side journal bearing to the bearing pedestal. Install the turbine side thrust bearing. After installing the nozzle, install the turbine side journal bearing to the bearing pedestal. Install the packing and the labyrinth packing. Clean the rotor shaft and apply lubricating oil to the shaft sufficiently. Apply also the lubricating oil sufficiently to the journal bearing where the rotor shaft passes. Carefully and slowly insert the rotor shaft so that it does not damage the labyrinth packing fin. Coat the turbine side thrust bearing and the thrust collar with lubricating oil. Reassemble the thrust collar to the rotor shaft. Attach the support to the bearing pedestal with the compressor side thrust bearing attached. Reassemble the sleeve to align the match marks of the rotor shaft. Reassemble the compressor side oil thrower. After pushing the impeller by hand, 
Attach the washer and screw in the locking nut. Lightly turn the spanner by hand and determine the place where the locking nut stops turning as the zero position of tightening. Put the temporary match mark of the locking nut using the match marks of the impeller and washer as a reference. Tighten the locking nut with a spanner to the match marks of the impeller and washer. Loosen the locking nut once and make sure that the match marks of the locking nut is at the initial zero position. After confirming that the match marks align, tighten with the spanner to the right position. If the locking nut turning angle varies, we tighten and erase the old match marks and stamp new match marks. Measure the distance from the end of the nut to the shaft end with a caliper or a depth gauge. Compare with the values obtained before overhaul and confirm that it has been fastened securely. Lightly turn the rotor shaft in reverse direction of the operation. Confirm that it rotates smoothly and there is no contacting noise. Attach a dial gauge to the end of the rotor shaft and measure the deflection at the shaft end. If the deflection measures 0.05 millimeters or more, it is considered that foreign matter is included in the contact surfaces of the impeller, sleeve, thrust collar, or rotor shaft. In that case, remove the impeller again to check the contact surfaces. Now, measure the thrust clearance. Set a dial gauge on the end of the rotor shaft just as you did before disassembly. The thrust clearance is the difference between when the rotor shaft is pushed and when it is pulled. Check that the clearance is the same as it was before disassembly. Attach the bearing pedestal with the rotor to the gas inlet casing. Check the packing between the bearing pedestal and the gas inlet casing. Carefully assemble the scroll and the air inlet casing to the bearing pedestal so that they do not come in contact with the impeller. With the clearance gauge, measure the clearance between the air inlet casing and the impeller blade tips at four locations, top, bottom, right, and left. Check that the clearance confirms to the standard value. In the event that the gas inlet casing is removed from the engine, measure the clearance between the turbine wheel and the gas inlet casing at four locations, top, bottom, right and left and make sure that the clearance is within the standard. For details of clearance standards, please refer to the clearance table in the instruction manual at hand. Lastly, reassemble the silencer to the scroll 